All right. Welcome again, everybody. So excited to have you here today. And man, God has got such a word to release. I I, I tell you what, if you, you ought to hop in um before we get the recording started and praise with us. It's just been a it's an awesome, awesome way to begin. And uh, God's just been showering his love. And I'm so excited to have Coach Steph hosting us today. Man, what a powerful woman of God, prayer warrior, just uh, chases after the heart of God and um and it's evident in everything she does and says and a wonderful uh leader in business as well so I am just we are honored to have her hosting here today you go ahead and take it away coach oh, good morning my family man what a wonderful day to have a wonderful day you know sometimes we get started with these things and God gives us a thought. I think one of the other calls that we were on, um, God gave me a thought about the suddenlies. So this is the season of supernatural right. suddenlies. And I had prepared some things. And um, this morning when the computer went dark and the document hadn't been saved, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, we're still doing suddenlies. Amen. And so I want to say to you that in the things that are going on in our lives, that we have seasons, right? So we think of winter, cold, um, sometimes things, the ground is hard. There's things that um, you have to brace yourself for. You have yeah. to layer yourself. And so in the seasons of winter, sometimes there's sadness, heartbreak, there's loneliness, there's sickness, there's things that go on in the season of. In the season of spring where um, we begin to see the budding of the, the, the first flowers and, and hope comes again. And, and you know that there's time for new beginnings and new opportunities in the season of. In the summer, we see those signs of growth and the uh, flowers bursting forth in colors. And, you know, we in, in the spiritual there's a need for protection of certain flowers. You have to, certain things have to be planted and covered and all of that. Um, and then in that abundance, there's a lot going on. So that could be distractions, right? In the season of, in the season of fall, when the leaves are falling and the, um, the trees are now kind of pulling back on what ha the foliage had been in our lives. And it's a time for um, gathering the resources and, um, whatever the successes and the achievements have been, even some of the things that we might consider failures in the season of. And we know that seasons overlap. I mean, right here in Georgia, you could have winter, spring, summer, and fall all in the same day, right? Um, we have, uh, I'm from the North, I'm from Jersey. And so when it's cold, when it's winter, it we don't have summer. It's just winter, it's cold, it's snow, it's ice, it's all of that. But in our lives, I thank God that the seasons overlap because sometimes life can be very harsh. And when it is, if there weren't those springs of hope, if there weren't the signs that there will be better days, we would literally, uh, our hearts would fail us for fear of this never ending. And so the Lord reminded me that, you know, in his word, he, he says, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly. And so, when I look at, um, let's look at Hezekiah, 2 Chronicles 29, and I apologize that I don't have the version, but I'll read it. Hey, uh, Coach Steph, yep. could you come up a little closer to your mic? Oh, come closer to my mic or use my outside voice. Which one? Either one. Use one. your outside voice. Outside That's great, too. Voice. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Pastor Don. So in 2 Chronicles 29, Hezekiah becomes king, and he was 25 years old at the time, okay? Um, he reigned for 29 years. And the scripture says that in God's opinion, he was a good king because he kept to the standards of his ancestor David. In the first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah, having first repaired the doors of the temple of God, threw them open to the public. He assembled the priests and Levites 
in the court on the east side and said, Levites, listen, consecrate yourselves and consecrate the temple of God. Give this much defiled place a good house clean. Our ancestors went wrong and lived badly before God. They discarded him, turned away from this house where we meet God and walked off. They boarded up the doors, turned out the lights, and canceled all the acts of worship of the God of Israel in the Holy Temple. And because of that, God's anger flared up and he turned those people into a public exhibit of disaster, a moral history lesson. Look and read. This is why our ancestors were killed and this is why our wives and sons and daughters were taken prisoner and made slaves, he says. I have decided to make a covenant with God of Israel, with the God of Israel, and turn history around so that God will no longer be angry with us. Children, don't drag your feet in this. God has chosen you to take your place before him, to serve in conducting the and leading worship. This is your life work. Make sure you do it and do it well. The Amplified Version says in a verse, 11, uh, verse 11, my sons do not be negligent and careless now for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to attend to his service and to be his ministers and burn incense. Further down in 2 Chronicles 29 and 36, and Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. And Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had prepared for the people for the thing came about suddenly. And so I've been sent here this morning to say to you, put your name where Hezekiah's name is. Don, Coach Steph, Crystal, and this is how you're appearing in my screen. Crystal, Anel, Vivian, Makita, Jacinta, Gerada, Rhonda, Audrey, and then Don again, so you get a double portion. How about that? Alice, Michelle, and Miss Dunlap. You have entered a Kairos season of supernatural suddenness. You have just begun the first year of your reign. I'm calling you Hezekiah, but hear your name. How old are you? Write that down. How old are you now? You are king. In God's opinion, you are a good king. You are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Repair the doors of your temple. In the Bible, doors are metaphors for the choices we make every day. So Joshua 24, 15 in the message, if you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God you'd rather serve and do it today. Choose one of the gods your ancestors worshiped from the country beyond the river or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you're now living. As for me and my family, we'll worship God. Throw your doors open to the public. Revelation 22, 17, amplify. Revelation 22, 17, amplify. The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, the believers say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes 
take a drink of the water of life without cost. Hezekiah, assemble the priests and Levites. See, being the firstborn is about being uniquely responsible. It's an extra layer of responsibility and representation of the Father. And out of the dust of the land, God formed one unique priestly representative pair in the Garden of Eden. Spirit is no gender, but God made that pair male and female. Two distinct callings, two distinct purposes in the one. So as priests and Levites, those who perform subordinate services that are associated with public worship were known as Levites. And in this capacity, the Levites were musicians, gatekeepers, and guardians. They were temple officials, judges, craftsmen. Hezekiah said, Levites, listen. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. See, the Most High God, he is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6 and Hebrews 13, 8 declare that God is the same always and never changes. He is always good, always loving, always all-powerful. No matter how this world changes around us, we can trust that God is consistent. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are eternal beings. So in the economy of God, time, past, present, and future are all now. Chronological time is a measure for human experience. So here we go. In order to lay hold of our futures, we must first be willing to acknowledge our past and take responsibility, not blame, not shame, not guilt, not fault, but responsibility for it. And in acknowledging it and taking responsibility, we must be willing to go into the memory of our past, not as the person you were, we must be willing to go in as the person we have become in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we must go there and stand. We must face it. And while we're there, we must declare, I am here now, past, present, and future, by the collective power, the God presence of the entire universe. I'm here to restore that which was lost. So whatever you felt like was lost in your past, your present, that would impact your future negatively, name it. And go to that place and stand there and face it and declare, I am here now, past, present, and future, by the collective power, Holy Spirit, God presence of the entire universe. And I'm here to restore that which was lost. And stand there and feel the power of that and take it back. And once that which was lost is found and recovered, rejoice. Rejoice. Because we can go and make the crooked place straight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Excavate your dreams. Be willing to hope and trust again and agree with this suddenly season in your life. Rejoice. Excavate your dreams. Excavate your dreams. Excavate your dreams. Dig them out. We must go digging. Dig them out. That thing that God said to you, thus says the Lord to you, Hezekiah, dig them out. Excavate your dreams and be willing to hope and trust again. Agree with this suddenly season in your life. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had prepared for the people, for the thing came about suddenly. When the fullness of preparation 
meets the fullness of time. It results in the culture where the atmosphere will suddenly come to pass. When we think about Joseph, Moses, Esther, Jesus, and everyone else in the word, we see that there's always purpose in the preparation that God has us going through. We're in Cairo's time, that's strategic time. It's not like minutes and seconds and hours and no, it's now. The atmosphere where suddenly's come to pass is breakthrough and breakout erases the weariness of previous seasons. That's why we must go and stand to wash that stuff away. It is a refreshing. It is a refreshing. Times of refreshing come from being in the presence of the Lord. And so speaking upon us, break through, break out, erasing of the weariness of the previous season, refreshing the presence of the Lord upon us. And we know that the waiting is worth the outcome. So when we think about our businesses and we think about this season of suddenness and we stand in his presence, Christ in us, the hope of glory, Holy Spirit at work in us to will and to do of God's good pleasure. And he says, it is God's good pleasure he delights to give us the very kingdom of God. It is his good pleasure that as we experience this season of suddenness, we understand that it is God's doing and it is marvelous in us. And that's what he gave me to deliver to us this morning. May God add every blessing every sign and every wonder that follows the believers. Wow. 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 Amen. What a beautiful rhema word that God, man, I mean, you went through a whole lot, just a little bit, and I hope everybody has caught that, but what what a necessity to, as you are stepping in your land, as you are taking hold of this thing, the process of deliverance of that past is so key, and, and, and Holy Spirit is so just, you know, he's so on time, because I was thinking about that very thing this morning of just those that, you know, as I was in prayer, I, I just praying over those that feel they they still don't see that we're here. And um, and it's because of those things that happened back then and that I don't want them to miss the suddenly, to miss the moment, to miss seeing where God is. Um, and so that that right there is a very powerful thing. I pray that everybody would go back and listen to this again to just just for that part alone, uh, if anything, if you're feeling there. But you said so so many, so much, man. The 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 I, I mean, <laughs> you know, every, I'm not I'm not I'm gonna just let everybody I'm gonna let everybody go. <laughs> Let everybody else uh who else has some things that they would like to contribute to this because uh, i mean it's just this phenomenal phenomenal all right go ahead pastor don amen praise the lord <laughs> Lakita, i got you <laughs> you too krista i got you but anyway to god be the glory coach staff praise the lord see um you know as you were talking one of the things is that, you know, we got to make sure that we get the right attitude. The right attitude. I, I'm, I'm beginning to see even the more of why it's important for us to praise the Lord. To praise the Lord. To start our day praising the Lord because it'll get our focus in the on the right one who is the Lord. You know, and and, you know, so so because 
you know, life have life has a way of of you know uh, you know get getting in front of us, and we focus more on on the what's happening at the time. You know, the, we, we're focusing on the storm, whatever the case might be. But guess what? Glory to God. God got us suddenly for every challenge, every situation, every whatever comes before us. God has us suddenly waiting for us. All we need to do is be obedient. Glory to God. And, and wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Knowing that something's gonna come, you may not know. I mean, let's go back to the day of Pentecost. Every time when I when I hear the word suddenly, I, I think of the day of Pentecost. Glory to God. Jesus says, Go, go wait. Okay, they were waiting in the upper room, they didn't know exactly what was gonna go on, but they all they knew, all oh, watch this. All they had was is a word from the Lord. Go and wait. Oh my God, grab that, go and wait. And when we when we wait on the Lord and we have that expectation, suddenly it's gonna come into our lives. Suddenly, hallelujah. It says there was a sound from heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And and the and the fire, hallelujah, you know, fell on them and they began to speak. See, we gotta say okay. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. You gotta you gotta speak, you gotta say something. Hallelujah. When you when you begin to speak, hallelujah, you begin to speak about the goodness of the Lord. Just like on yesterday, hallelujah. I caught it, hallelujah. The Queen of Sheba came because they were talking about not so much Solomon, but they're talking about what Solomon was talking about, and that is the goodness of the Lord. Woo! Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, 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 celebrate, try, get ready, get ready, get ready for your suddenly is about to manifest in the name of Jesus. See, some of us, you know, any of y'all got some stuff seem to be piling up and it's piling up against you, coming against you. Oh, you better get ready. Hallelujah. Suddenly is coming your way in the name of Jesus. Guess what? And I'm waiting for mine too. Hallelujah. And the way you wait is that you gotta give them praise. You gotta give them glory. You gotta have an expectation, hallelujah, that suddenly are on the way. So I, 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 that's all I got to say about <laughs> that, at least for right now. Come on now, because Crystal, they just ready to set me off. I know and that. Remember today. this, life goes ahead of us to prepare what we need before we need it so hmm. that as we arrive, it is there for us. It is there. Amen. It goes before us. Amen. All right. Amen. Go ahead, Crystal. Well, you know, um, this morning I had kind of a negative experience. I was having a challenge with my management office. And so when I got on the call, I was not in the place that I wanted to be, you know. And then the praise song came on. And it just lifted my spirits, you know, because I wasn't really where, you know, the energy I had wasn't, wasn't right. <laughs> it wasn't right. And then Steph gets on here and talks about suddenly, because suddenly, just that quickly, my spirit was changed, just like, just like that. Amen. You know, and I began to think about, I don't need to focus on whatever that was, mm -hmm. you know, because what I should be focused on is what's going to happen for me in the future down mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. And just like that, my focus just shifted, you know, just let that go and just focus on what is to be rather than what just happened 10 minutes ago, whatever it was. Amen. So I, I, I thank y'all and I thank you, Miss Steph, because that that message was definitely one that I needed today. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Amen. Amen, sis. And we need to understand that it's always now. Mm -hmm. And you just gave a perfect example of how in an instant shift. So I give God praise for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Keita. 
Y'all might want to turn. Y'all, um, y'all speakers down because I'm saying woo! <laughs> woo, 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 woo. When I say my spirit's over here limping, I can't even sit down to talk to you all. So when I say Holy Spirit is very intentional, like my pen, I usually will miss some stuff, but my pen was just a right. You come on here for 15 minutes. I get two pages of notes and I'm just constantly just writing. But let's talk about time, present, future, all now. Come on, you said acknowledge our past, taking responsibility, willing to go into the past with the spirit, standing with this grace posture. And we've been talking about that, this grace posture to stand. I'm in my suddenly. Do you understand that everything I speak Anytime that God puts me in place of people is because of my past. And when I was going through those things and I was enduring pain and I, I felt like I was falling and sometimes I felt like I was alone. Do you understand that it is the very thing that I lean on to push somebody forward? Do you understand that it is something that I am able to just be able to just praise his name and give somebody a testimony of hope? Do you understand that? And, and it's now because it's it's been restoration all this time. So why is it that we do it time after time after time to want to give up on him? But yet he has planted us and, and stood us on this firm foundation to be able. Oh, my God, Lord. Oh, God, use me. When I say he is so intentional, so intentional that that we've all been experiencing this suddenly all this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now it's this new thing, this mindset, this shift, that how we walk, how we move is with such peace. I pray because Jacinta, the same thing when you spoke yesterday, God made me write things. There are people in this space that feel like they don't get it. He says, some of them still don't believe that I'm here with them. And it's okay. It's okay. But it's enough of us here that he can be able to move and use us. We have never arrived with him. When I say this piece is so beautiful, it's so profound, it's so... It, and then to come on here and to understand that everything... It says, take back what was lost. We, yes. we I get to go back somewhere yes. and, and look clearly mm -hmm. what I couldn't see then when I went through it and pull it back to here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Come on, y'all. Amen. Come on. Yeah. yeah, we recover. Nothing is ever taken. Oh, <laughs> yes. Amen. That's all I can say. I, I'm full. And his grace is sufficient, and it is. And he is mm -hmm. intentional about having us stand on the. He's while you were talking, he said. He's intentional about having us stand on your pain and make a spectacle of it. Stand mm. on the obstacle of your pain and make a spectacle of it. Stand on the obstacle of your pain and make a spectacle of it. Wow. I'm writing it. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, um. Man, what a word, what a word today. And, you know, when you said, like, I, I hope that just brought it home. It says you have become, you said you have just begun the year of your reign. You know, that, that's, that's it right there. And you are king and you are a good king. God sees you. This, this is, this all lines up with, as he's been talking about this governing body that you are in your part of your land. You are a good king. He sees you that way. And you have just begun. What does that, how, how does that make you sit in your chair and stand in your, in, in, in your space 
you are you have just begun your reign you know and we see that there are there are incremental there are things that we do as we reign what what hezekiah put his hand to first as he began his reign you know that those are man is that that's just powerful powerful and and making a spectacle of your pain mm. You know, we had to, we came a long way to be, had to now have the authority to do that right there. That it takes a journey to be able to come to the place where you can stand and make a spectacle of your pain. That right there is huge, <laughs> huge, huge. So much, man, so much that God is releasing today, most definitely. You got to get keep keep listening, get in there and listen more and let God continue to pour out, because I believe that this is a word he's going to be speaking to you all day about this. If you let him. He will be speaking to you all day about this. And the thing about this, y'all, when he does that, when he continues to release to you as you go throughout your day, which is, as we talked about that living by every word, every stream of the word. Yesterday, we talked about how long can you go? How long can you live without the word streaming forth? About as long as you can live without air, right? And if he's doing that, you understand that in that process, there is also the catching up of time. There is the suddenly the release. There is the acceleration because when he's speaking to you all day like that, he's pulling you forward. He's pulling, he, he's pushing you. He's saying, hey, this is what you need to know now. Know it now, get it. He's quickening you to do that. And I just, I, I mean, I'm just sensing he's gonna be doing that all day today if you'll let him. If you'll let him, this is a time. This is a point right here. Um, you know, and and I, I'll, anybody else have anything that they wanna, I mean, whew, what else can you say? You know, I, I'll, um, the, the last thing I'll say is this, as we, yeah, I, I, what I was talking about earlier about kind of not seeing and missing the time I've heard a couple of people who are referencing this time, like Goshen and, and he, here's the thing I, I want you to see, because Goshen was a time in which was a place where basically the Israelites were able to be covered and, and hidden when um the the plagues came you know they're in the midst of that that journey of getting ready to to leave Egypt um and when you look on the outside in the world it will feel that way but be very careful because you're not in Goshen you're in the promised land we're beyond Goshen <laughs> we're beyond Goshen okay and it's important that you recognize that it's important that you recognize that um, we were in Goshen as we came through this journey and we're in the middle of, but we're not there anymore. We're not there anymore. We are in the land. It is your time to reign. We are beginning the rebuild process. And just as, just as, you know, she just mentioned in, in, in the Hezekiah, I, I mean, suddenly everybody was excited because these things just took place. That's what we're, that's where we are. And that was just a perfect layout. Thank you, Coach Steph, for your obedience today. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So our thoughts, we're in that that flow of energy and that flow of transmitting of that mm -hmm. flow of receiving we stand before the most high god with full access in his presence yes and where there is his presence there is fullness of joy yes fullness of joy let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And if Christ Jesus is in you, the hope of glory, that mind is already in you. We're just getting confirmation of what is already present. We are the living word. Mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he's here representing himself as us. 
Amen. Amen. When I see you, I see Jesus in you. It makes me love it. I know he cares. It makes me listen. I love his voice through you. I trust him in you. Because mm -hmm. you're his. Amen. Amen. Don, were you about to say something else? Yeah, you, you had mentioned about that Goshen and and that what came to my mind is that Goshen was good mm -hmm. for the time mm -hmm. being. Mm -hmm. But watch this. But it wasn't the promise of God. Right. Exactly. Exactly. God says, I'm going to take you to the promised land in, in, in Canaan. I'm that's what I that's what I have for you because that's what I told Abraham from the beginning. Right. That's where you would be. Right. Goshen looked good. Yeah. And it would, it, uh, watch this, and it would have been easy for the children of Israel to get settled yeah. right there mm -hmm. because it was you remember it was during a famine and mm -hmm. and, and the Pharaoh says, man, y'all can have this land right here. Mm -hmm. Get settled, right? See, that's what the enemy wants us to do, to mm -hmm. get settled for um, just enough <laughs> right. Right. when God has plenty for us in the promised land, right. overflowing right. of right. milk and honey. Right. And, and this is why I push so much, you know, even from a spiritual standpoint of you pushing your spirit to come higher, to not settle back. You know, when people say, I just don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, no, don't, don't settle there. You can settle like, you know, Lakita talked about average. You don't set, push your spirit higher, get in better tune with the Holy Spirit because he will tell you, God will proceed a word out of his mouth all day long to you if you let it don't that that part right there is settling in Goshen if I don't push my spirit forward let alone to receiving all of the the, the physical things and settling in a place of just enough or you know I'm good I mean I'm good I can I could stay here I'm, I'm all right but we got to push spiritually as well. We can't settle for just the same relationship you've had with the Holy Spirit. Got to keep moving. There is so much more. There's so much more. Man, amen. I love it. Amen. Pastor Don, Goshen is a place of comfort and plenty. Yes. Man is a place where dreams and hopes come true. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 Oh. All right, y'all. Man, what do you do after that? Praise. <laughs> Amen. We praise the Lord for this word today. 